Uh, but now on to a little bit about the history of the Morton Theater. And give me a minute to orient myself to the clicker. There we go. Um, from the outside at the Morton, uh, one of the first things I always make sure people notice is the building does not say Morton Theater. It says Morton Building. Uh, that's because the, the, the building itself was a lot more than just the theater. That essentially was just one room in the entire building. Granted, it's the largest room, but it was just one space in the building. Uh, there were professional services, retail, uh, areas for social gathering, and of course the theater which provided the entertainment. Uh, there were doctors, dentists, uh, barber shops, beauty shops. There were two funeral homes, pool halls, and all kinds of things. But what made all of those unique at the time when the building was built in 1910 was not only was the building, but all of those other businesses inside were all owned and created by African Americans. Uh, Monroe Bowers Morton, or Pink Morton as he was better known uh, at the time, built and owned and operated the Morton Theater. At the time, the Athens Banner, uh, yes it was the Banner first, so the Athens Banner called the Morton Building the biggest, the largest building to be built, owned, and operated by a colored man in all the world. So uh, they, they thought very highly of the building, and of course, and there are no records to dispute otherwise, so I think we'll keep that. Um, I have his dates here listed as 1853, because we've also seen it reported as 1856. So we're still actually, this year, we hope to nail down the accurate date, as accurate as one could. Uh, Pete Morton had his uh, light-colored complexion because he was the son of a slave, or yes, he was the son of a slave mother, and his father was not. That's the way I explain it to the third graders. That way they keep up. It's very wonderful. Uh, sorry. Oh. Uh, these are portraits that we were able to get of Pink Morton, and we actually, in the theater, have a wonderful artist rendering of him as well. Uh, these, uh, especially the, pic the picture here when he appears younger, was actually supplied to us by Pink Morton's grandson, who was uh, retired and living in Reno, Nevada. But we'll come back on to him a little bit later. Uh, Pink Morton owned a lot more than just the Morton building. He owned a stately home on Prince Avenue. Address was 823 Prince Avenue, on the corner of Prince and Millage, where Flowerland stands today. You know, uh, like a lot of buildings of that era in the 70s, it was woefully torn down. Uh, he owned the Morton, he owned his home, he owned 25 other buildings throughout the city and other areas, including um, 146 East Clayton Street, at the time, it was considered a $25,000 marble structure. It is one of the few structures downtown, still in the downtown area, that is built out of marble. And if you notice, at the very top there, you see the Morton Cornerstone. This building, and of course the cornerstone being marble, is still there. Uh, Helix used to occupy that space, and since they closed, I'm not sure who currently owns it. But it is still there on 146 East Clayton Street, and of course, here is the view of the Morton. And if you notice here, there's a little building there. And then we'll talk a little bit more about all the other structures that came around uh, a little bit further in. And I've always also been told that the figure standing here with this bicycle is Pink Morton himself, although we've never had that verified. But seeing as how we do know that is him in the portrait here, it stands to reason that we're taking an official photograph of this building. Most likely was him. All right, the Morton Theater sits at the corner of West Washington and Hull Streets, and at the time that was called the Hot Corner. Uh, between the Morton Building and all of the other businesses inside the Morton Building, the Samaritan Building next door to the Morton, and then uh, right across the street from the Morton on the Hull Street side, uh, right now it's Wilson Soul Food and Brown, well not Wilson Soul Food, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm more of that loss as well. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, Wilson's Barbershop, Brown's Barbershop, and those structures were there, but of course different businesses. But between those three buildings, that was the core of all African American life in Athens, and honestly, the surrounding regions. And it's because of these uh, professionals that actually had offices in the Morton Building. Uh, Dr. Ida Mae Johnson Hiram was the first black female licensed to practice medicine in the state of Georgia, and she was a dentist in the Morton Building. Uh, Dr. W.H. Uh, Harris was a medical doctor. He actually came from uh, Harvard. He studied at Harvard uh, before moving to Athens and uh, practicing medicine. 
He was also part owner of the E.E. E. Harris Pharmacy, which was another part of the Morton Building. And then Dr. Blanche Thompson, she was the first black female medical doctor in the state of Georgia, all of which had offices and practices at the Morton Building. Also, Atlanta Life, uh, speaking of professionals, of course, it was founded in Atlanta, but the very first satellite office of Atlanta Life was located in the Morton Building. And here are pictures of uh, the E.D. Harris Pharmacy at the time. And it literally adjoins the Morton Building. Uh, it's right downstairs inside, and if you've ever driven past, excuse me, it's the windows on the whole street side. and ad. And of course you notice in here they mentioned they cater to all the Negro doctors and all of your needs. If it's a drug, we have it. It's a wonderful soda fountain. They talk about purchasing tickets for the show. It is, it, this was literally a, a big hub here in the Morton Building. Now, Monroe Bowers Morton was a pretty outstanding individual, whether it was 1910 or even today by what he was able to accomplish. Not only was he a contractor, built, owned, and operated a lot of the buildings and rented them out and leased the spaces out to other individuals as well. He helped build a courthouse in Washington, Wilkes County. He built the courthouse in Anniston, Alabama. And as I'm told, he only missed building the government building here in Athens by a few hundred dollars. So uh, it was off his bid, although I'm guessing a few hundred dollars was still <laughs> quite a bit of difference back in uh, those early times. He was a uh, president and general manager of the Athens Contracting Company, which built all of those buildings. Uh, he was a newspaper publisher. He owned the New Progressive Era. Uh, he was Postmaster General of Athens for five years. And he, as a district Republican Party leader, was on the National Convention Committee that told William McKinley he was their nominee for president. So he was able to accomplish quite a bit. And still, to this day, there are a lot of question marks about how he was able to get so far. Um, all the research that we have had so far indicates that he didn't have very much of an education. Uh, being an African American at the time, and not to mention in early years, having very little money to start with. Uh, he did eventually put both of his sisters, though, through, uh, through the university, over at the Atlanta University. Now, the Morton is at one of the first and the oldest surviving vaudeville theater in the United States. I have to say one of the first and not the first. There is still a debate about a theater that was built in Dallas. Uh, I don't think anyone is ever going to win that debate, so we put one of the first. That way we still go. But we are the oldest surviving, as that theater is no longer in existence. Now, in the theater now, we have a few relics from the past, and of course, different uh, landmarks that kind of let you know where you are. Um, up here at the top, we have two of the original seats from the theater. Originally, we, get, we believe it seated about 700. We seat 500 today. Uh, here's the original light board for the theater. And uh, Pink Morton's son was actually the light board operator. Uh, each of the individual switches there, of course, uh, corresponds with an individual light. And the discs down here below the bottom, um, for years and years I've been giving the tour, I've been leaning against the wall, actually leaning against this wall, pointing to the light board, and it wasn't until we had a recent conference of uh, theater technicians uh, from the southeast. And of course, they immediately went over to it and picked it apart. We're talking about it. And it turns out at the bottom here, this was one of the first light boards. Oh, goodness. All right. Push the button. Let's see. It's all gone. Oh, there we go. We're back. Note to self don't hit stop anymore. Okay. Uh, this was one of the very first light boards, though, that could dim. So it was still technologically, it was pretty advanced at the time. Uh, we also have on display at the theater the original heater, and it's a good old cast iron heater. We're not sure if it was wood or coal burning. That we're still trying to research as well. But it is very ornate. With the beautiful uh, M emblazoned right there on there. And it's funny, for years and years I've been talking about just the kind of coordination to make sure things matched in monograms. And maybe six years ago I was leaning and giving a tour, and I looked at very common, um, very small print, Moore's Heat and Air. So he just picked vendors very well. <laughs> and then, of course, one of our, our, our biggest landmarks in, within the theater is our beautiful medallion that sits top and center in the, in the auditorium. Uh, at the time, of course, not having centralized heating and air, uh, in addition to being able to open up windows, of course, for, for ventilation, there is also a large fan hidden behind that, uh, that grate 
and the fan is actually still there. Not, not that we turn it on, but as I hear it, it can still exist in a bench. And again, here you now you see exactly from the auditorium space where the medallion sits. Uh, we talked about the fact that uh, Pete Morton was on just, he made sure technologically he was right in the forefront of different things. Uh, even down into this building. I mean, the Morton building was one of the very first in Athens that was wired for electricity. Uh, but just to make sure, you know, he did install these sconces which we still have sconces on the wall in those places where they were, uh, that were gas, just in case that electricity thing didn't work out. Uh, but of course, everything else was all electric. Uh, before, there were 700 seats here in the theater, and we currently see 500. And uh, of course, now these, uh, are, we all get larger, we get taller. <laughs> and uh, with this, here we, go, we have our exits. So we had to, of course, empty out different space for fire egress path, paths as well. Um, also, being a contractor, and it's a little hard to see, so again, and forgive me because I'm used to giving it in the theater, uh, the columns that hold up the balcony, they don't match. Uh, they were literally cast offs from other jobs, and he used those to be able to hold up the balcony and in place. He was able to really recycle a lot of different uh, items in order to be able to bring this building together. Uh, in fact, the different styles that go into the building. Uh, it matches the opera houses of the time in terms of its shape and the horseshoe uh, shape that you find here in the balcony. Yet we have these beautiful Chinese style pagodas. And here we have little Greek key looking teeth. And it's, it's just amazing. I, I imagine that at the time, you know, he is a well traveled individual. He gets to go out and see and build all these different buildings and is able to kind of incorporate a lot of uh, what he sees in these other places in order to make the theater, although simple. Grand. Now with the Morton as a vaudeville theater, we don't have the luxury of having all of the posters from all the different events that happen or having tracking slips of you know, an act coming from one theater to our theater to another. So a lot of what we know about the individual performers that came to the Morton was literally by things like posters that were found uh, or ticket stubs that were found in the theater during the renovation. We know Cab Calloway was there. We know Duke Ellington was there. And uh, there's a ticket, st or a stub from when the theater functioned as a movie theater. And then, of course, the poster here for Butterbeans and CZ, popular uh, comedy act at the time. We were able to utilize a lot of the information based on those ticket stubs and also acts of vandalism, honestly. A lot of the performers literally scratch their names onto walls or into floors. Uh, for example, to highlight that in our fire curtain, and this is actually uh, designed by uh, Joe Stell, and it appears on our fire curtain today. But if you notice in the corners, there are little names like Roy Dunn here, and Curly Weaver, there's Eva Reese, and then one you can't read is Charles Fat Hayden, which is here. These were all, they're written here for a specific purpose because all of those scrawlings are what were found literally in the theater during the renovation. Uh, today, most of those are covered up based on where the modern meads were and where holes were cut for doorways and, and for fire egress. But the one that still exists and can still be seen today is Charles Battaigne. He is visible from the stage right brick wall. Um, in addition here, we've got a couple of the pictures of a few of the individuals you see here, and again, Everyone that's on our fire curtain are people that we know some way or another actually did perform at the Morton Theater. Uh, Ma Rainey speaks of it or in, in, within her biography. It is spoken of her dinners with Pink Morton when she performed at the Morton. And we have Paul Johnson, who is also from Athens. Duke Ellington, Cab Calloway, there's Butter Beans and Susie there. We've got Black Patty and Blonde Willie McTell. And there's Curly Weaver. Now the theater functioned, actually I should go back before we get that particular slide, there we go. The theater functioned as a vaudeville theater for many years, and of course at the time, uh, they were on the TOBA circuit, the Theater Owners, uh, theater Owners Booking Association. And that is the organization that took acts uh, across the country. So of course at that time, that's you know, about television and, and all the other modern conveniences, that's how 
citizens here in Athens and in Denver, Colorado, and even as far as uh, Canada, were able to sing the same songs and do the same dances as, the, as these troops traveled from city to city to be able to uh, display these talents. Now, being at the Morton, though, was a pretty spectacular thing for a lot of these performers. Within Athens and within that hot corner, no matter where, what you needed at that point, you could see a doctor, you could see a dentist, you could buy groceries, you could find a place to stay. You could get all of the different things that you needed by stopping at the Morton. It was very important, not just for its entertainment, but also for the actual service that it provided, not just the citizens here in Athens, but also the traveling artists. Um, I, the, there is an author who has written a book about Black Patty, and she mentions, for example, that Black Patty had a really difficult time, uh, of course, finding places to stay. So she became so popular and so wealthy at the time, she ended up purchasing her own railroad car and they would just hook onto the train, and that's how she went from city to city, always being able to travel, always having a place to stay, and then when finding yourself in a city like Athens, near the Morton, able to take care of all of your other needs, get her, uh, her, her, her uh, train car all stocked up, and be ready to move on to the next city. Now, we are fortunate here in Georgia, not only is the, uh, at the Morton Theater part of that African-American touring circuit, but also down in Douglas, excuse me, down in Macon, the Douglas Theater, uh, is there as well. It was also an African-American built up and operated theater as well. They sat on a wealth of information that we wish that we had. They sat on a vault and within their vault they did have all of their records. So they know all of the different performers that came through and they have these wonderful meticulous notes and this history that they can fall back on. You know, which I admit, I'm jealous. I like that. Uh, but we were able to validate some of our performers uh, through their research in the, you know, their tracking slip saying that an act came from Athens to Macon on their way to Columbus, for example. So we were able to get some information from that. And then, of course, being here in Athens, a little college town, there's always a student willing to do some historical research of some kind. Uh, we had a student from the drama department who uh, was writing her dissertation on, and, I, and I don't quite remember what element of costume design in Josephine Baker, but she was able to prove that Josephine Baker came through the Morton Theater, not as a performer, but as a dresser. It turns out the uh, dance company that she started with as a dresser came through the Morton Theater often, and she was able to pinpoint that during the time that Josephine Baker was a dresser, they did perform at the Morton Theater. So that was exciting. And we always find different little tidbits. And again, this year, you know, when I get to the end, we'll talk a little bit more about it. We hope to validate a lot more of the information that we've always kind of had or heard or, or even things that we you know, know about but don't talk about because we're not 100% sure uh, of the validity. But we'll get to that. Uh, but of course, operating as a vaudeville theater, you know, eventually vaudeville falls out of style and, and the theater is not as successful as it once was. But of course, the other businesses are still thriving. Um, the, block of the hot corner is so popular that everybody wants to put a business there. In fact, uh, Dr. Harris, from, who had a practice in the Morton, eventually helped finance the Samaritan Building, where other professionals were able to put their businesses. And in between the Samaritan Building and the Morton Building, someone sandwiched a building right in between the two. In fact, to this day at the Morton, if you're opening up the windows, you see brick wall, uh, of course, when it was built, it was blue skies, but that building wanting to take advantage of that area got right in there so they could get their own piece of the hot corner as well. Now, Pink Morton uh, passed away in 1919, February 1919, and at this point, Vaudeville is falling a little bit out of a favor. He leaves behind his wife, and in this picture you only see two of the children, but he did leave behind four children as well. Uh, he passed away in 1919, and his son did continue on uh, running the board. But at that point, vaudeville was no longer popular, and they still needed to find a way to continue to generate revenue. So what I believe would have been very, very against Pink Morton's wishes, eventually it turned into a burlesque house, showing a little bit different entertainment. Uh, for a while it existed as a burlesque house, and then eventually, you know, through modern technology and everything else, eventually it becomes, <clears throat> excuse me, it becomes a movie palace. So around the 1930s, that's when the, the building converts, or the theater rather, converts, and it is now showing film. Now, at some point, in, in around 1954, a small fire breaks out in the projection booth. 
Now, a lot of local lore seems to believe, oh, it gutted the theater, and that's why it was closed for the, all those years, and it was hard to get in, and you know, there were rabbits and dogs, and you know, death and destruction and mayhem. No, it was no, nothing quite so serious. Uh, the fire that took place, well, it was nothing more than a few coats of paint and a really good cleaning job would have taken complete care of. But that is the first time a fire marshal had ever stepped foot in there. <laughs> And at that point, walking around with those 700 seats all packed in nice and tight, he let the family know at the time, you're either going to have to put in some kind of fire exit, or you're going to have to close this theater down. Well, they thought about it for a while, and eventually did exactly what the fire marshal said. They shut the theater down. They chained the doors up, and from that point on, the Morton Theater kind of died out. Now again, they're still able to generate revenue because they are renting the spaces and the other parts of the building out to businesses. So the company is still thriving and the family is still able to make an income, but the theater itself now sits dormant, which is completely, oh, it, it's a travesty really. We, as in the theater, really missed out on a lot of really wonderful acts that came within the next 40 year span. Uh, if we talk about Georgia artists alone, you know, we, get Otis Redding. You know, we didn't get all of those individuals that were coming out of Macon and out of Middle Georgia and touring the world and really setting everything on fire. Well, that's probably a bad choice of words there. Uh, but we, thank you so much. <laughs> but we really missed out on that particular part of history. Oh, how wonderful it would have been to say James Brown performed in the morning. If only. But we can't limit what didn't happen. We have to then talk about what eventually does happen after time. You know, after time, you know, things move on, you know, the 70s came and went, and at this point, not every business in the building is operated by African Americans anymore. Uh, in fact, a lot of artists are finding their way in, and uh, I say their way in like it's, it's, it's a club. <laughs> They're actually just purchasing the different spaces or leasing the different spaces out. The, the Morton family at some point does leave in the 1970s and sells the building to the Bond Company, and they continue again to lease out the space. Still, the theater itself, closed off, chained off, and pretty much everyone forgets it's really there. Now eventually, at the corner, the Bluebird, I'm sorry, the El Dorado, actually, before the Bluebird, uh, takes residence downstairs in the Morton Building, and they were the first vegetarian restaurant in Athens. Uh, they have a few enterprising individuals there, uh, young kids that like to play music and need to find, as, as any musician even today will tell you, they need to find a place to rehearse. Well, eventually they find their way up into this insides of the Morton building and find out there's a, there's a theater in there. It's a big, wide open space. Well, it's a big, wide open space, but the ceiling has fallen in. You know, it's, as I was told, it was the biggest pigeon house in all of Athens. Uh, just, it was just an empty spot, but you know, as long as they didn't bother anybody and you know, no one seemed to mind, they would go in, start to sweep up, put buckets out to collect rainwater, and now you've got this great big open space to, to rehearse during the day and, or when you're not working, and then hit the Athens streets at night and play all the clubs and, and make Athens the music city that uh, we, of course, have become today. Uh, we know those individuals now as, as uh, band members from REM and the B-52s. But slowly, it's starting to make a bit of an impact. That there, is some, there is something more to that building than what meets the eye. Eventually, some enterprising citizens kind of find their way in and decide, you know, this should be saved. And after a while, they formed the Morton Theater Corporation, a nonprofit organization with the sole purpose of saving the Morton. So after a while, they're together and they get a big campaign going, supporting the Morton. They put on several vaudeville shows throughout the city and different high school auditoriums and any place that, that would have them in order to raise enough money. Uh, between the funds raised there and a grant that they received, they're finally able to purchase the building from the bond company and put a roof on it to protect the investment. Okay, got a theater, it's got a roof, now what? <laughs> well, at this point, uh, a lot of different efforts are put together to try to figure out, now that it's saved, how do we renovate and restore this building? So luckily, the citizens of athens Clark County came to the rescue. And as part of, uh, after a lot of grassroots campaigning from the community, and fortunately for us, a, a, a government that sees some value in culture and arts uh, agreed, and the Morton Building was included in the original Speed Lost. And that's where we received the $1.8 million needed to renovate the building. Now here's what they came in to find. 
political portraits. Again, here you see one of the life mutual doors, one of the buildings, old pianos. Of course, you see the ceiling here has fallen in. But again, the structure itself is still pretty tight. So our pagodas there, just more of the roof. Now, the plans are beginning. <coughs> Renovations begin. Uh, again, we've got the brand new roof that was put on. The stage had fallen completely in and it just did not exist anymore. Go our empty roof again. And now all of the renovations are taking place. At this point, it is just the Morton building here that is taken that the renovations are taking place in. In fact, that does not include the blue at the time the Bluebird Cafe. They did move out for the renovations, but they were still part of the building at that time. And then there you go from the floor again, looking up at the other side of the balcony. Now eventually, uh, in 1993, all of these renovations were taking place. Uh, they're starting to bring all the, the kids. There we go. Well, I skipped it. There, that's what it looks like now. <laughs> okay, so here we go with all the different uh, efforts here. And you see where the different businesses have put on there, where they've moved to, so that uh, everyone lo looking for them knows where to go find them during this construction. So of course, all of those efforts, and in 1993, the theater was renovated and restored to what you see there. Uh, the theater now, see, at the time, our seating capacity was 548. Uh, everything was restored, and it was a reno actually renovated, not restored. It's because, of course, now the entire building is functioning as a theater, whereas before, it was just the theater proper. So it was a renovation and not a restoration. We are, actually, the building's facade is on the National Register of Historic Places. So that does allow us to go in and make different changes within the inside of the building uh, for, for our modern means. And these are some of the pictures from the exterior of the building, a lot of the landmark things that we all know and love today. Uh, this again, it was the West Fire Tower. This of course was added on during the renovation. Uh, on our east side, there was enough land to be able to put a large empty tower so everybody can egress inside and in comfort and completely out of harm's way. But this is, we had to actually cantilever this entire little structure off the side of the building because of course there's no land on the bottom to put a structure on. But that takes the individuals right from our stage and auditorium, down one flight of stairs, and then back into the building where they can exit safely. So that was a, it, it takes a lot of creativity to be able to work with a building that's at that time nearing 100 years old. We have our, uh, we've returned our wonderful awnings, and of course, the Morton building still stands today. We have gone through several renovations, uh, the original one, of course, being in 1993, and the most recent, of which you see here, started in 1910, during our centennial anniversary year. Uh, we started by changing out all of the windows uh, to make, because honestly, you could stand in the theater and you could hear wind. Uh, it, we had a lot of the original glass in a lot of places. So now it's all double pane uh, so that we can keep what's outside outside and keep what's inside inside. Uh, that was the very first. Uh, we repainted the facade, and now we've come in to, and through a lot of individuals and a lot of grants that were awarded, we were able to get the theater to where it is today. Uh, we're part of the Fox Theater Institute, and of course, that, the most famous of our, our saved theaters here in Georgia. Uh, to kind of pay it forward, they have started this institute where they go out and assist other historic facilities or theaters in Georgia. And right, actually, right now, they're having so much success doing that, they're reaching out beyond the state of Georgia, too, to rescue other theaters. Uh, but they were able to give us a grant so that we could redo the floors. Uh, the original 100-year-old floor does still exist upstairs in the balcony at the bleacher section. But of course, 40 years of wear and tear and rain will eventually get to the main floor. So that one we did recover with a reclaimed heart pine that was 100 years old. So now it doesn't look like a great uh, brand new gymnasium floor in the middle of a 100-year-old building. It is still accurate to the building. Uh, we were able to recover the seats. We have brand new carpeting. Uh, we're really slowly and surely getting every nook and cranny of the building touched and, and redone and, and refurbished in a way that really speaks to the history of the building. We're very, very proud of all the work that's gone into it. 
Uh, in fact, just this, just today, uh, I left a conference where we'll soon be getting rid of the 20 plus year old heating and air system. Yay! So now you can sit and watch things in comfort every season. <laughs> now, we are currently, uh, of course, a part of Athens Clark County Unified Government. Uh, at the time of winning the Speed Lost Award, uh, there is a caveat to being able to get Speed Lost dollars. You, you have to be in Athens Clark County facility. And of course, the building was uh, owned at the time by the Ward Theater Corporation. Well, they literally handed ownership over to Athens Clark County in order for the theater to be renovated. And the two of them have a management agreement between them so that the Morton Theater Corporation, a 501c3 nonprofit organization, is still involved in the day to day operations of the Morton. Uh, they recently changed their management agreement, but they are still there. And they are still managing certain parts of our day to day operation, and the two organizations are working pretty well together these days. Um, but we are a unit of the Arts and Nature Division uh, within the Leisure Services Department. Uh, our sister facilities include the East Athens Educational Dance Center, uh, the Linden House Arts Center, and the Sandy Creek Nature Center. Uh, also, uh, one of our other sister organizations that doesn't have its own facility is Athens Creative Theater. Their staff is actually housed at the Morton Theater, and they perform both at the Morton as well as at Quinn Hall over in Memorial Park. There we go. Our mission statement at the Morton, uh, Morton Theater of the Leisure Services Department, Arts and Nature Division, and as a service of local government, and this we really worked really hard to get exactly the crux of what it is at the Morton is. You know, a sophisticated historic performance venue which is committed to showcasing rich, dynamic, and diverse entertainment and cultural events. Uh, we are a rental facility, which is how we operate now, so we don't control our own season. So you won't see a, season, a Morton season ticket. We just don't know a lot of times what all is going on in the theater to be able to put together such a package. Not to mention each individual renter is in charge of their own event. Uh, but with our facility and the staff that's there, we're able to help, it, help individuals, whether they come in and they're a touring show uh, from Virginia. In fact, we have a lot of, we have a group that does that. They come in for children's matinee shows uh, throughout the school year. They literally, we kind of open the doors and step back and once they're done, we lock back up and tell them thank you. Uh, but we also have the staff's knowledge in order to be able to work with anyone from that level down to, hey, we have this idea to put on a show, we have this money, we'd like to put it on, what do we do now? So we're able to really help out in all of those aspects. You know, we are, of course, downtown. Uh, again, because our schedule is so just unpredictable, honestly, uh, the best way to find out what's going on at the Morton is uh, our website, mortontheater.com. Uh, we also have a web presence on the athens Clark County website. That's athensclarkcounty.com slash Morton. Uh, we're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. Because, of course, that's where the people are. And uh, again, we, work, we function as a rental facility. Uh, we're on the National Register of Historic Places. Uh, we are really a able to handle almost any type of event. I uh, don't think just because we're a theater, it's got to be a stage show. I mean, we do dance. In fact, we do a lot of dance at the Morton Theater. Uh, there's also film. We have the capability to run film. Uh, different special events. We do the Athens Flagpole, Flagpole Athens Music Awards every year. Uh, we actually just did the Athens Hip Hop Awards even just uh, earlier this month. We've had weddings, memorial services. Uh, that is honestly one of the most unique things about my job at the Morton is it's, it, it could be anything. We are only limited by the imagination of the individual renting the theater space. So it really could be any, a little bit of anything. Uh, just an example, in March, coming up just next month, we have um, African night, Caribbean night, <laughs> Mediterranean night, Athens slingshot, and then, oh, is there another March? I'm sure I'm missing a March event. I don't know that's the one that just called, so we'll see what they are. But that is just representative of one month alone. Uh, back earlier this month, our most, one of our most popular events every year, the International Championship of Collegiate Acapella. If anyone has ever seen a Pitch Perfect, that's what that was based off of. 
but we have several university organizations that come with a cappella concerts. Oh, it, it is honestly, talent-wise, one of the most amazing things that happens in, in our theater. Uh, they come in every year in February, and the UGA groups will be returning in April for their own a cappella concert called Bugapalooza. So we're the annual site for that as well. Um, Athens Creative Theater does their annual fall production. Uh, last year it was Aladdin. I believe this year they're going to do Oscar Hammerstein's Cinderella. Wait, is it Oscar? No, wait a minute. Thank you, <laughs> Cinderella. So we'll do their version of Cinderella this year. So we're very excited about a lot of the things coming up. Uh, in addition to shows, we, uh, we're, we're a historic landmark, not just here in Athens, but nationally. So we also conduct tours. Uh, we just ask that you call ahead, because of course our schedule is not always our own. And it always helps to know ahead of time who's coming and who needs to be there. I want to thank everybody for coming. Um, culture, heritage, community, on the hot corner in the classic city. Uh, that's kind of our motto now. Uh, we changed that over from Athens Historic Showplace because we felt like this was a little bit more encompassing of everything that we do. I mean, from the very beginning of the Morton, when Pink Morton himself opened it, uh, it was always supposed to be a center for the community to gather and to entertain, and we feel like we still do that to this day. 90% um, of our renters are nonprofit organizations who are utilizing the funds that they receive from their performance or event in order to fund their own visions and missions. So in that way, we, uh, we do help to reach out and touch into the community well beyond just being able to sing and dance and act on the stage. Uh, we love education, and along with the Morton Theater Corporation, we work to make sure that, individual, that youth are actually impacted by the arts and can see different performances and, and really working to make sure that everybody gets that exposure. You know, I often say because we do work with uh, athens Clark County and uh, in you know, times where budgets are tight, you know, when they're thinking about cutting, you know, the arts get cut quite a bit. I admit, you know, I, I know we're not curing cancer. You know, your house burns down, please don't call the morgue. We can't help you. You know, if you get a ticket, you know, I can, we can't do anything for you. But I've always heard, and one of the things I, I, I truly agree with, is you know, arts you know, and culture. We don't make a lawyer, but we make a lawyer better. You know, if nothing else, that exposure to the arts or their participation in it give them the opportunity, if nothing else, but for just that moment, that two hours that they're in that show, or that hour that they're walking around seeing that particular exhibit or that dance, they're able to, for just those moments, be able to take themselves out of their comfort zone for a minute and see something else through somebody else's interpretation. If we could all do that just a little bit more often, just imagine what we all can do. So again, if there are any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them, but if nothing else, I really want to thank everybody for coming out. Uh, Pink Morton is buried in Gospel Pilgrim Cemetery. Oh, yes. Where is that? Gospel Pilgrim is on the east side of town. Does anybody know specifically? Fort, 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 Fort Street. area. It's, it's on Fort Street. And they're actually renovating that uh, cemetery as well right now. Any other questions? But again, uh, you know, seeing it on the screen and hearing someone talk about it is one thing. You, know, you can't experience it, experience it truly until you're right there in it. So by all means, come see a show. Come see a tour.